And still in the news, President Mohamed Buhari has reacted to the outcry on the reform of the Nigerian police force, promising to extensively reform the force. He disclosed this while delivering a speech at the launch of the presidential youth empowerment scheme at the State House in Abuja. The recent genuine concerns and agitations by Nigerians about the excessive use of force and in some cases extrajudicial killings and wrongful conduct by means of the Nigerian police force. The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives and livelihoods of our people. President Buhari equally assures the protesting public that officers involved in the extrajudicial killings will be fished out and punished. We will also ensure that all those responsible for misconduct or wrongful acts are brought to justice. We also deeply regret the loss of life of the young men in Ohio State during the recent demonstrations. I have directed that the circumstances of his death should be thoroughly investigated. Meanwhile, it is important to recognize that the vast majority of men and women of the police force are hardworking and diligent in performing their duties. The few bad eggs should not be allowed to tarnish the image and the reputation the Nigerian police has pledged to ensure that officers of the just disbanded Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad, who were found guilty of the various crimes leveled against the unit, would be appropriately dealt with. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, made the declaration while speaking with ace musician David O and his team at the force headquarters in Abuja. Adamu, however, added that this can only be possible after an investigative panel which will encompass members of the public, civil society organizations, as well as other stakeholders have been put together. Our five demands, this is what's Number one, immediate release of all arrested protesters. Justice for all deceased victims of police brutality and appropriate compensation for their families. Setting up an independent body to oversee the investigation and prosecution of all reports of police misconduct, psychological e evaluation and retraining of all disbanded SARS officers before they can be redeployed. Increase police salary so that they are adequately compensated for protecting lives and property of citizens. An investigation team will be constituted, which will include civil society organizations, in identifying all those abuses, and that those that are found culpable will be punished. That is justice. SARS is disbanded, but people are still protesting. We don't understand the reason. Because when the unit is disbanded, as you rightly observe, it is not just one day mm -hmm. that you will get effect. You will take some steps in order to put another one in place and take all the necessary corrections that should have been made so that you will have a unit that will be acceptable to everybody. This unit was disbanded yesterday. We expected that the protesters will calm down. calm down and give us chance to interface with people like you, the civil society organization, and take their input into the next structure we are bringing. Joining us live is security expert Tony Foyeton and also joining us from the NSARS protest ground at the Leki Tollgate is PLOS TV Africa senior news correspondent Fumi Unajefe. Thank you both for joining us.
All right, I'm going to kick off with uh, speaking with Fumi, who is live at the protest uh, ground. Can you hear us uh, clearly? All right, Osari, yeah, I don't know if you can hear me. There's a lot of noise in the background. Yes, I hear um, The protesters have finally arrived at the toll gate, and the protests have begun. There's a lot of chanting going on. They're requesting that the um, police should be reformed. They're requesting that people that were detained should be released as well. And all the five demands earlier um, demanded, if you remember, there was a, a demand, a, a report, uh, a statement that was released on, um, on Sunday asking for five demands, that until those demands have been met, they will not stop protesting. And that they feel that the federal government is paying lip service to disbanding SARS. And they also want um, a reform. And one of the very fundamental things I must point out about this protest is that there is no leader. I've gone around to ask them, oh, who is the leader? Who can I speak with? Anybody can speak, but there is no leader. They keep telling me there's no leader. They don't want anyone to take over the protest. There is no leader, um, you know, for this protest. So you can hear all the songs behind. There's still no um, police. Um, I haven't seen any police men on site so far, except for the LCCI officials who have now left um, the toll gate. They have left everywhere, just, you know, staying um, 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 aside. And then the the, um, uh, the vehicles are diverted to the alternative route. And some are even actually just turning right back and heading back um, in the direction that they're coming from. What are their numbers like uh, currently? Uh, the last time we spoke, it seemed like they were, they were still trickling in. Um, have they gotten a lot more um, right now? Oh, yes, there are a lot more now. I even just had a, um, I just got a report from our reporter at Muri Okwala. If you remember, um, last night there were reports that it was going to be protests at Muri Okwala. They have been asked to divert to the Lekki toll gate. They have all been asked to divert to the Lekki toll gate. And more protesters are coming in every um, minute. So in the past um, 10 minutes now, we've seen more people um, tripping. So there are a lot more than um, about 10 or 20 minutes ago. So even the people from the uh, Muri Okwala have been asked to come here to the Lekki toll gate. And, and what, from the people that you spoke with, what are the biggest demands that they are still making? And why don't they still okay. believe in, in the words of the presidency and the IG? Well, they say based on past experience that the police has been disbanded about four times, um, 2017, 2018, 2019, and the same time, same thing again, 2020. And they just believe that the government is doing lip service. That yes, because I asked one of the protesters, that, look, reforms, are, um, conversations are going on in Abuja. Why don't they wait? So, you know, the conversations are over before they continue with their protest. They're saying no, that once the conversations have been made, there should be a proper announcement. There should be an executive order to tell them that all the things that they have demanded for are now being put in place. The feel is another lip service. Um, somebody already said they don't trust the government so now until things are actually done. And then, of course, yesterday, um, if you remember, a lot of protesters were arrested. They want all the protesters that were arrested to be released and that no one should be shot because it's just been a peaceful um, protest. They say they'll be here as long. They'll continue to come out for protests every day until things change. All right. Um, we, we would, of course, uh, get back to you. Um, thank you so much for, of course, being there to, uh, to help monitor thank and you, um, see what's going on thank over you. there. And hopefully we can also get to speak with one or two of the protesters uh, next time that we reconnect Oh, definitely. With you. I'm trying to work on it. Because they're gathering themselves, um, they refuse to speak to the camera just yet. But once I get lay hold on someone, we'll, I'll come back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, Fumi. And, uh, of course, uh, back to our uh, um, expert, security expert, uh, Tony Ufoyeta. And thank you so much once again for joining us. Uh, quickly share your reaction to the continued NSAS protest. The issue of the NSAS protest, the product of the TikTok, uh, from the uh, people generally. Because if you, if you observe what has been happening in previous years, uh, there has been several ban of the uh, um, in 2018, it was banned. In 2019, it was banned. In 2020, it was also banned. I think they felt that um, it's just um, uh, too much of promises on curse. And this time around, it's either you are doing it or you are not doing it. Uh, but having said to me, what I expected the government to do, especially Mr. President, when it came on air, was um, to announce most probably a reform. Uh, not not just to say, to uh, repeat what the IG has said. Um, I, I expected to talk to those that were responsible, uh, they've been arrested and they've been charged either to be in the room 
And uh, this is now that John is going to be taking a good time immediately. Not to say that uh, the, uh, he has instructed that they should be thoroughly investigated. That is one. Then I also expect that uh, by now there should have been a committee that will be responsible for the reform, the holistic reform of uh, the security architecture, especially as it affects this. Don't forget that it's not only a matter of the past. We are talking of police brutality. Um, that is one of those things. Then the issue is to those that that have been involved in all these that have been asked. Yes, I'm sure that Nigeria would have made their experience same value on what has happened, what they have suffered in the hands of staff. And over the years, the government has played this year to the education of the people, especially the youth. And I think that that is one of the major reasons why they now decided that youth enough is enough. Uh, but having said so, I, I want the government to come on out to make sure that it is not a political rhetoric. Because that is the major fear of those people that are saying, no, we want to see a decisive action. And I think that that is the major thing that is keeping them on the street. They haven't said so. The only thing I would talk to you about is to do. Since they know they have the power to always call for their own mobilization as well, when they feel that the government has disappointed, it's not time for them to be done and see what government is going to do next. Uh, instead of, uh, you know, uh, because they also have its own interest. Okay, I think on, in I, I want to go in a different direction. Years, I spent about five hours in the room, basically because of the entire thing. All right, um, Ms. Uh, Tony, quickly also talk about what do you think this might snowball into? Um, yesterday, after the, of course, the governor of Lagos State met with uh, the protesters at the Lekki toll gate, um, there was still um, incidents of violence going on. Of course, there were still reports of uh, one of the protesters killed, um, who lost his life in the, in the, uh, um, during the protest. Um, do you think that those things might well, urge, of course, the protesters and, and push them forward into more protest? Or do, do you think that the governor has done enough to calm them down? Well, I think one of the major problems that is leading to some of these casualties, with due respect to the police commission, is the fact that the leadership of the police and maybe they are the level of top-ranking senior officers. They should understand some elements of crisis management. But all that are on the field, as far as I'm concerned, they should not know anything about crisis management. You are talking of a situation where you are protesting and you are coming with nice ammunition. Now, these guys are just holding drugs and some of them are holding nothing other than just placards. What we have said in a civilized society is for the police to even give them protection. But when the police give them protection, what the police are considered in doing is to also do what no less technically say we are solidarity with you. But when you have the situation where in an attempt to try a peaceful riot, the police now begin to shoot less ammunition. I'm sure you have seen recorded casualties. The one that happened to shoot later on Saturday. Which was a very an eyesore by all ramifications. Now, what I expect the police to make sure that we don't do to ensure that even if there had to be some of these fires, let the police be the ones to protecting these boys, those to prevent them from those mistrants among them from vandalizing properties and the like. And I think that it is high time that the government come all out, passing all out. There are a lot of reforms. Some of us are clamoring for state police system. If, we are, if the government had had a plan for state police, by now we will not be talking about this type of crisis. Now the police formation came with the idea of community policing. Some of us said community policing will not work without the state police. It doesn't stop as effective as we think like that. So I, I expect that the government should, by now, should have formed a very powerful professionally based um, uh, uh, restructuring committee that will restructure the and when you talk about that report, I think I have to quickly say that it should be done outside the police. In other words, it should not be the police officers, whether that whether serving or retired that are going to head the committee. Because you cannot expect a policeman to come and help a, 
a restructuring committee of the police and a third country fundamentally different. So these are things that I think the government should really look forward to. And it is better to do that quickly. Because now we are talking of end time. If the government is not affected quickly, you'll be talking of end estimated billing. You'll be talking about hashtag end corruption. You'll be talking about hashtag end disarmenda. Before you wait, politicians will hijack it. The good thing about this now is that it is organized by the youth leaderlessly. And that is also one of the signs and symptoms of a revolution in any nation. Any crisis that is generated and is successful without a clear leader is a very dangerous one for any serious minded organization. In, go and look at the history of revolution all over the world. It is predicated upon a leaderless, as in a leaderless revolution. That is how it starts. So now that it is still just on one hand, the government can quell it successfully. But if they bring in policy, then of course it becomes extremely difficult for them to quell it. Because there are going to be different ideas, there are going to be different better interests. And that is why I trust the indulgence of the government as they work quickly. And bring these professionals from outside the uh, government because they get it. They can bring in representatives from the police, yes, representatives. But let this be something that will go here. You, the market women that will both professional to private space industry, trainers and the like. Let everybody come together and let all decide on the type of policy system we want in this nation. That is what much. we want. So if they are doing a reform and they are thinking uh, an institutional reform on the people, the people I apologize. Uh, that's uh, the most that we can take uh, on that conversation. Thank you very much to Tony Foyata, security expert, for sharing with us. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.